Assalamu alaikum guys. In this short video lecture, I would like to guide you for five big mistakes in the construction of plinth beam. Most of the people, they are making a lot of mistakes in the construction of plinth beam, but they don't know. So here we have some common mistakes in plinth beam. So let me guide you for those mistakes. So let's get started guys. You can see guys, this is the section of plinth beam and this is its long section. Okay. So the first mistake the people are doing especially in plinth beam that is size of beam the second one is for longitudinal bars the third one is for stirrups details the fourth one is for development length and the last one is for lapping length okay guys you can see this is the uh, section remember if you are making one story or double story or two story so the size of the plinth beam should not be less than it should not be less than 9 by 12 inches this is its width it should not be less than 9 inches and this is its depth which is 12 inches so it should not be less than 9 by 12 inches but in most of the construction you can see the people are making specially square column 9 by 9 inches so this is not correct because the depth should be increased compared to its width okay so this is the minimum size of plinth beam if you are making one story or two story for residential building okay the second one is guys for longitudinal bars remember if you are making one story building so in that case for residential building not for commercial building you can use four steel rods but if you are going for double story so for that or for three story so for that we will hire hire the structural engineer to give you the steel structural drawing for steel reinforcement if that is beam column slab or foundation guys you can see for one story you can use uh, four steel rods so the dia should not be less than 12 mm so guys you can see here this is steel reinforcement two steel rods at the bottom two at the top so this dia should not be less than 12 mm okay this is for residential building it should not be less than this next guys you can see we have two steel rods at the top portion remember that concrete is weak in tension but it's strong in compression so in that case Remember that you can use maximum numbers at the bottom because it's weak. Concrete is weak in tension. So therefore, you can use maximum numbers compared to its compression zone. If you are using two steel rods at the, uh, at the top, so used minimum three steel rods at the bottom. But the people are using the same design. If they are, they are providing three steel rods at the bottom, three at the top, sometime two at the bottom, two at the top, four at the bottom, four at the top. So this is the wrong way. This is not the correct design of steel reinforcement in the construction of plane beam so used maximum numbers at the bottom which is tension zone and minimum numbers at the compression zone which is upper portion okay next guys you can see if you are going for a double story so don't use uh, less than five numbers so uh, three steel rods minimum at the bottom and two at the top okay this is for plane beam if you are making crank bar so in the case uh, in the case of crank bar you can use two steel rods okay which should be uh, crank at upper portion to resist negative bending moment okay so this is the second point for longitudinal bars now guys you can see here the third one is here these are longitudinal bars guys you can see the black color you can see so here the green color you can see here this is uh, the beam okay inside black color is steel reinforcement especially longitudinal bars the red colors can show you these linings for the stirrups so now come to the stirrups details remember guys don't use less than 8 mm dia for la, uh, for stirrups with the spacing of 150 mm to 200 mm okay don't use less than this if you see guys here this is the total length so from start to finish this is the length uh, between two columns you can say okay so this is the clear length or span for this beam if you see guys we have l by 4 L by 4 mean total length divided by 4. That is called L by 4 where we have negative bending moment. So here guys, if you see here 8 mm die of steel reinforcement for stirrups, if you see 150 to 200 mm, if you see guys the, uh, the spacing is closed compared to this position. So at the distance of L by 4, the stirrups should be provided closely, okay, which is up to 150 mm or 6 inches. But after L by 4, you can increase the distance which you can keep up to 7 to 8 inches no problem but at the end of the support which is uh, l by 4 so don't provide maximum uh, spacing there okay so this is very important 
if you see guys the stirrups so the hooks should be provided here guys you can see these hooks should be provided and the hooks length should not be less than 3 inches okay or 9d where d is 9d or 10d you can say where d is die of steel reinforcement for stirrup okay next so for example if i am using 10d okay 10d means 10 multiply 8 mm so 10 multiply 8 mm which is die of steel reinforcement for stirrup so it means this is here 8 multiply 10 so this is 80 mm 80 mm is about 3 inches okay 75 mm is 3 inches next guys here these uh, you can see the hooks so the hooks should be provided at the angle of 135 degrees so don't provide on the 90 degrees so 135 is best so this is very important but provide it alternately okay the hooks should not be provided at the same direction but you can provide uh, in the case of uh, beam okay you can provide alternately up and down one side the other side the hooks the hooks should be placed like that okay the other one is guys development length so most of the people they don't know what is development length guys if you see the longitudinal bar same like this guys you can see so the development length is very important okay guys you can see this is development length so in most of the construction you can see they are directly left like this so this is the wrong way so it should be provided like this so this is development length this is very important to make a good bond between steel and concrete okay so development length is important if you see guys here the depth is 12 inches so if the depth is 12, uh, 12 inches so minimum you can keep this up to 3 to 4 inches okay so this is development length so don't uh, so don't lift uh, like normal but provide development length okay to make a good bond between steel and concrete the last one is guys lapping length okay as i told you in many videos what is lapping length as you know guys from the factory we have 12 meter steel rod or 40 feet so in that case we require to overlap one steel rod to another to get the sufficient length of beam column slip anything so in that case we are providing the lapping if you require to provide the lapping remember guys don't provide lapping in beam and bottom portion guys you can see this is tension zone so in tension zone if you see guys here this is tension zone so don't provide the intention zone here at this place okay if you require the lapping so the lapping should not be provided at the middle of this beam like here intention zone but you cannot provide okay also at the distance of l by 4 you can't provide but here at the junction you can provide the lapping length also after l by 4 you can provide but don't provide at the middle don't provide at the l by 4 distance but at the junction you can provide the lapping length especially for plant beam or for floor beam but remember if you require to provide the lapping but you can provide an upper portion if you require to provide lapping in upper portion so an upper portion you can provide here at the middle l by 2 distance l by 2 it means for example if that is 4 feet 4 meter for example if this is 6 meter okay the total so l divided by 2 so we are 6 divided by 2 so at the distance of 3 meter it means this is the middle so at the middle you can provide the lapping in upper portion but not in bottom portion this is very important but here guys you can see here you cannot provide the lapping at this place at the distance of l by 4 because here we have negative bending moment negative bending moment is same like this guys you can see here same like this so here we have negative bending moment and here we have the positive bending moment but in bottom portion we have the positive bending moment so therefore don't provide lapping at the bottom but here we don't have the positive bending moment in upper portion so you can provide the lapping you cannot provide the lapping in this portion at uh, l by 4 distance because here we have a negative bending moment so therefore you cannot provide so in the case of that place to resist negative bending moment as you know we are providing the steel reinforcement which is called crank bar same like this guys you can see here like this this is crank bar to resist negative bending moment are extra steel rods so guys these are steel reinforcement and details which i have discussed especially five big mistakes which the people are doing normally so if you are working on construction sites so be careful for these mistakes and don't do again thanks for watching see you in next video goodbye